2.1 billion. That's the amount of streams that Hozier has accumulated on the first song he released as a solo artist, Take Me to Church. This will be followed by a successful decade-spanning career with a platinum and gold album, millions of streams, and a devoted fanbase who love and adore everything he does. But how did he achieve these huge milestones? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know who you'd like to see me cover next. Let's get into it. On March 17, 1990, Andrew John Hosier Bryan was born in Bray, Ireland. Growing up, Andrew was surrounded by two things that had influenced his life forever, religion and music. His mother was an artist and his father was a banker who also played drums in a blues band. Unfortunately, when Andrew was only six years old, his father would be forced to retire due to nerve damage in his spine, leaving his mother to pay the bills alone. Although the family struggled, his parents were bound together by one thing, their strong devotion to the Quaker faith. Although his parents were Quakers, Andrew took a different path, going to a Catholic secondary school and developing strong opinions about religion that had influenced much of his music going forward. Growing up, Andrew never really enjoyed school and gravitated much more towards music, joining the school choir as well as teaching himself guitar. A 15-year-old Andrew would also join his first band around this time, a blues cover band called the Blue Zoots. Although this band never found much success, he continued trying to learn more about music, going to college for music education at Trinity College. During this time, Andrew would end up joining numerous music groups, including the Trinity Orchestra, the Anunia Vocal Ensemble, and a funk-slash-jazz band called The Groove he started with his friends. With all these new musical endeavors, Andrew didn't have the time to focus on college and would end up dropping out in his first year to pursue music for time. Throughout the next few years, he spent most of his free time either writing solo music or performing with the various musical groups he was a part of. He'd even get to tour internationally with the Nunia, playing shows in Norway and the Netherlands, as well as playing numerous festival shows in Ireland like the Oxygen Festival. He stayed with the Nunia until 2012 when he departed the group before subsequently joining a new jazz band called the Nova Collective, made up of old friends from Trinity. In 2013, while still performing with the Groove, now known as Zaska, as well as the Nova Collective, he'd also begun taking his solo career more seriously, writing more and more demos and trying to establish his own sound. He would send these demo songs to a man named Niall Mookin, the founder of a small indie label called Ruby Works Records, in hopes of being signed. Eventually, Niall began to see potential in Andrew and signed him to the label. Following his signing, the label sought out producers to turn Andrew's rough demo songs into a clean sounding EP. They finally settled on producer Rob Kirwan, who unlike other producers, dialed in on the sound Andrew wanted instead of trying to make a radio pop hit. Rob and Andrew would spend a little over a week in the studio re-recording three demo songs before finally releasing the Take Me to Church EP on September 13th, 2013 under the stage name Hosier. Although no one really expected the project to gain much traction, they would quickly be proven wrong with the title track Take Me to Church quickly beginning to go viral online due to his lyrics criticizing homophobia within the Catholic Church as well as Andrew's strong, soulful voice. Take me to church, Seeing the success the song was receiving, the label gave Andrew a mere 1500 euro to record a music video. Although the budget was low, Andrew crafted a powerful message with the video portraying homophobia in Russia, something that was very prevalent in the political sphere around this time. The song's lyrics combined with the video made the song go even more viral, with people all over the world discussing its message and causing Take Me to Church to reach number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. With Hozier quickly becoming a household name, major labels began a bidding war to sign the young artist. Columbia Records would end up being the winner, and just like that, Andrew could finally say that he had made it in the music industry. Following the signing, Hozier began working on new music to try to expand his catalog before embarking on summer tours. He worked once again with Rob as his producer, and on March 9th, he released the From Eden EP. It once again featured four new songs, including a live version of the song To Be Alone recorded at the Pepper Canister Church in Ireland. It also featured Work Song, a slow, bluesy folk song about a worker's wife giving him strength during a hard day's work, and one of my personal favorites out of his discography. When pop time comes around, lay me gently in the cold dark. Following the release of new material, Hozier would spend the summer playing live shows and festivals, introducing new listeners to his sound. As the summer came to a close, Hozier began putting the final touches on his debut album, as well as teasing new songs for the album like Jackie and Wilson on various radio show appearances. We'll name our children, Jackie and Wilson, please, the more rhythm and blues. 
Finally, on September 19th, Closier's long-belated debut self-titled album was released. Although it missed out on the number one spot, being blocked by Jason Aldean and peaking at number two, this was still an incredible accomplishment as Hosier's folk, blues, and gospel-inspired sound was much different than what was typically charting at the time. Although Take Me to Church's unprecedented virality was a key reason for the album's success, that doesn't overshadow the fact that this album both sonically and lyrically is a masterpiece. Aside from the songs I've already mentioned, there's also the dark and energetic Angel of Small Death in the coding scene, which compares craving and attraction active woman to the feeling of coding cravings, as well as a slow blues inspired track to be alone. Feels good, girl, it feels good. Critically, the album was received very well, with critics praising the maturity of his lyrics at such a young age, as well as his ability to merge the sound of blues folk and gospel into something powerful and soulful. The album was also nominated for multiple awards including a Billboard Award, and Take Me to Church was even nominated for a Grammy, but lost out to Sam Smith's hit Stay With Me. Oh, won't you stay with me? Following the success of the album, Hozier would go out on a North American tour at the end of 2014 alongside James Bay, as well as have performances at various events and shows like the Grammys, Saturday Night Live, and the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. In 2015, Hozier embarked on his massive world tour and spent most of the year touring in support of his album. While on tour, he also recorded his first live DVD titled Live in America, which was released on July 31st and proved that Hozier had the ability to translate his booming, soulful vocals to the live stage. Following the rest of the year, he continued touring Europe and North America, as well as being featured on almost every festival you could think of, including Coachella, Lollapalooza, and the Firefly Festival. Needless to say, it was a busy year, and following the end of his tour in February of 2016, Hozier would take some time off to relax and write new music. During this time, a song called Arsonist Lullaby from his Eden EP was even prominently featured in a Walking Dead episode, further leading new fans to flock to his music. He do more film promotions this year too, contributing the song Better Love to the Legend of Tarzan movie in July. Following the release of Better Love, Hozier would go on hiatus to relax and work on new music, and for the next few years, things would be pretty quiet. That was until June 11th of 2018 when he made a tweet announcing new American tour dates for later in the year, as well as stating that his next record was nearing completion. Coinciding with the announcement, he'd also do an interview with NPR, where he spoke more about what the album could sound like, as well as announcing the name of what will become the title track of the album. I think musically, it's a, it's a logical step. Uh, forward from from the previous record, the kind of the influences are, are all still still there. Just the influence I had growing up, kind of um, blues music and soul music, etc. Is is there a lyric or a song title um, from from your upcoming work, Andrew, that you would be willing to share with us now? Uh, there's a song called Wasteland Baby, which is um, like spelled you know, Wasteland, comma Baby exclamation mark, and it's a kind of a like a, just a funny love song too somebody imagining the world as it is now and then you know imagining the worst case scenario. Fans would end up getting a small taste of what this album would bring on September 6th when Hozier released the Nina Cried Power EP. The project contained four songs including the title track Nina Cried Power which featured gospel legend Mavis Staples. And I could cry like Take Me to Church, this song also made a heavy political statement, but this time about urging civil and workers' rights activists to continue fighting for justice and equality. The song also name drops several notable activists from the past few decades, including Nina Simone, James Brown, and B.B. King, as a way to thank them and show appreciation for their activism, which still continues to shine today. Following the EP, he'd go on a North American tour in the fall to support the new music. While on this tour, he debuted a new song as well called Movement that would end up being released is the next single for the album on November 14th. So me, baby. Shake like the battle, throughout the rest of the year, Hozier toured throughout Europe as well as announcing the name of the new album, Wasteland Baby, as well as another North American tour set to begin in the spring. Moving into 2019, Hozier started off the year with a bang, releasing two new singles for the album, Almost Sweet Music on January 16th, now I wouldn't know where to start sweet music. 
in Dinner and Diatribes on February 15th. Two weeks later, on March 1st, Wasteland Baby was officially released. It debuted at number one on Billboard and was heavily praised by fans, although critics were more mixed. Sam Sadomsky of Pitchfork said, Nearly every element of Take Me to Church is isolated or recycled here in the hopes of crowning a successor. God is not in the house. This opinion was echoed by multiple other people as well, with many also noting that much of the album sounds similar and can tend to blend together when listening. The album has many good qualities too, however, including Hosier's iconic soulful vocals which have only improved as well as his production on songs like Shrike. Is it Shrike to your shine? Following the success of the album, Hozier began preparing for tour as well as doing album signings and even doing a live stripped down performance of some of the songs on the New York City subway. <laughs> Soon after this performance, on March 10th, Hozier embarked on the American leg of his Wasteland Baby tour. He continued touring for the next few months, playing shows throughout the United States and the UK, as well as multiple festivals including Bonnaroo and Lollapalooza. In October, between tour dates, he was featured on a remix of Mira Morris' song, The Bones. Call it dumb love, but baby you and I. As well as starting a podcast called The Cry Power Podcast. On this podcast, he would interview various important activists such as Annie Lennox, Bono, and his newly made friend Mavis Staples. While on the podcast, they tell stories as well as discuss various political and social issues, and I definitely recommend giving it a watch if you're a Hosier fan and interested in political activism. While recording the podcast, Hozier will continue touring throughout the rest of 2019, ending his tour on December 11th near home in Dublin, Ireland. It seemed like from posts on his Twitter, there may have been plans for another tour, but unfortunately, in March of 2020, as I'm sure you all know, all tours were completely halted due to the virus. Because of this, Hozier was fairly quiet throughout the year, aside from various virtual concerts he took part in to raise money for COVID relief. He also released a cover of the iconic Scottish song The Parting Glass on April 17th. So fill to me the parting glass. Throughout most of 2021, he continued to remain fairly quiet musically, aside from being featured on the song Tell It To My Heart with Italian producing trio Medusa on October 29th. Tell it to my heart. This was until December 31st, when he put out a tweet saying, want to wish you all a happy, peaceful, and safe end of 2021. I'm so grateful for the continued support, and I hope I get to thank some of you in person while touring the next chapter. Unreal on Earth will start to find its way to your ears next year, come hell or high water. This was followed by another tweet on January 29th of the lyrics for a song off of the upcoming album entitled The Selby, as well as another tweet with lyrics for another song called Rob the Goddess. Fans quickly became excited for more news about the album, but there will be radio silence for the next few months, until September 17th when he made a tweet saying that the first song for Unreal or Unearth will be released within weeks. Within the next week, Hozier gave us the dreamy and acoustic ballad Swan Before Lita. Although this was marketed as the first single off the album, it would never end up actually appearing on it for reasons unknown. Following this release, he'd make another non-album single, this time a song called Blood Upon the Snow for the video game God of War Ragnarok. Like blood upon the snow. Going into 2023, after four months with hardly no new news on Unreal Unearth, Hozier finally announced that he'd be releasing new music soon, a three-song EP called Eat Your Young. Along with the EP, he also announced a standalone concert date at the Malahide Castle in Ireland, set for June 30th. He continued promoting the Eat Your Young EP throughout the next month until its release on March 17th. Although two of the songs sounded reminiscent from his last two projects with soaring vocals and slow dreamy production, the third song and title track, Eat Your Young, sounds completely different from anything Hozier's released before. There's a very nice jazz feel to the production, and Hozier sticks to mainly falsetto breathy vocals throughout the chorus, much different than his usual soulful belting. Just 
Due to this stylistic change, the song became a minor hit, peaking at number 66 on the Billboard Hot 100. This was Hosier's first Hot 100 entry since his debut song Take Me to Church 10 years ago. After the success of the E Your Young EP, Hosier had both fans and critics captivated and hungry for more music. Throughout the next month, he continued playing various shows throughout Europe, including a fundraising concert at the prestigious Royal Albert Hall and an appearance on The Late Late Show. At these live shows, he begins showcasing one of the songs from the Eat Your Young EP called All Things In, and on April 27th, he released the song as a single. This was only a hint of what was to come though, as in May, while playing a series of pop-up shows in the US, Hosier made a tweet revealing the cover art for the upcoming album, as well as a release date set for August 18th. He also released a new single soon after called Francesca on May 19th. I tell them put me back in it. This song has quickly become a fan favorite and for good reason. It has more of a classic rock sound, something Hosier has dabbled in before and always succeeded with. The release of Francesca was followed shortly after by the song Unknown slash NTH a month later on June 23rd, a song which he previously debuted on TikTok and showcased many times throughout his tour. Well, you were After this release, he embarked on the Unreal on Earth tour, as well as releasing the final single for the album, The Selby 2, on July 21st. This leads us into present day, where at the time of me making this video, Hosier just released Unreal on Earth and is currently on tour in the US supporting the album, with the European tour coming soon. With this being his most experimental album yet, only time will tell if he will continue in this direction or go back to his usual sound. What do you guys think of Unreal on Earth, and are you guys going to see Hosier on tour? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe for more videos coming soon.